Your safety and the safety of your coworkers is the number one reason why the right type of protective system is used for the soil that you're working in. But before you choose a protective system, you have to test the soil to determine what type it is. Now, not all dirt or soil is the same. Solid rock is most stable and sandy soil is the least stable. You've probably heard that soil falls into four types, solid rock and types A, B, and C soil. Let's talk a little bit about what these classifications mean. Solid rock in most areas that I've seen it requires explosives for removal and it becomes a lot less stable when you blast it. In certain cases you can scrape away at it with frost hooks or vibratory hammers. But for the most part, solid rock isn't something that we work in on a regular basis. Type A soil is stiff and cohesive without fractures or cracks. A few examples might be caliche, typically found in the southwest, or hardpan, also called glacial till. Now you'll know this soil if you've worked in it. Hand digging is backbreaking. And if you've worked in these soils, you also know that their condition can change quickly. Caliche can be seamy and hardpan turns to slop when it gets too wet. Now it's important to keep in mind that no soil can be considered type A if it's fissured or cracked, or if it's subject to vibration of any type, or if it's been previously disturbed or has seeping water. If the soil is part of a sloped or layered system where the layers dip into the excavation on a slope of four to one or greater, the soil can't be considered type A either. These layers could slide off of each other, causing a collapse. The problem is it can be difficult to determine which way the layers run. Type C soil is the most granular, like sand or gravel. And type B is somewhere between types A and C, like subsoil or silty sand. Even some crushed or blasted rock could be classified as type B soil. Sometimes soil may have to be reclassified if the conditions affecting its original classification change in any way, such as with the addition of water from any source. Now many times we're digging around existing utilities as well, which increases the potential for collapse and for changing soil conditions. This is especially true with bedding materials used for most utility installations. Now there are some inherent problems in classifying soil as anything other than type C. You have to be careful because sometimes soil is layered. There may be a type B soil on the surface, but a few feet into the dig there might be a layer of type C soil. And how frequently do we find water on job sites? these conditions point to classification as type C. So soil should be treated as if it's type C unless proven otherwise. There are several ways to classify soil. Test bores taken before work begins provide a good indication in advance of the type of soils to expect, but you can't just rely on lab results. Out in the field, besides looking at the general excavation site and its surroundings, as the competent person, I have to perform a visual analysis of the soil itself. I check the composition of soil samples to see if the soil is granular or cohesive. I look for cracks and spalls in the sides of the excavation and around the adjacent surface area. I also check for existing utility lines and any other underground structures, and for any previously disturbed soil in or around the excavation. I also need to look for sources of vibration and surface water. Each one of these factors can affect the excavation stability and influence the type of protection needed before you get in. Manual tests must also be performed on soil before excavation begins, and there are a number of methods that can be used. Some of the methods test the cohesion of the soil, or how well it sticks together, and other methods test the strength of the soil. The thumb penetration test is probably the easiest soil test. All you do is press your thumb firmly into the soil. If your thumb doesn't go any further than the length of your thumbnail, it's most likely a type B soil. If your thumb penetrates the full length of your thumb, then it's probably type C soil or very granular. The problem with this test is that it can be very subjective. When I need to document my test results, I usually use a pocket penetrometer because it gives a reading that's easily interpreted and it's typically accepted in the engineering community. But even this device has its shortcomings. You have to try to avoid rocks and other particles that could influence the reading, and you don't want to test in an area where the soil's obviously been disturbed. It's important that the reading is taken in fresh samples, typically right from the spoil pile. You insert the shaft about a quarter of an inch into the soil with smooth, constant force, and take the reading from the indicator ring here. The limited accuracy of manual tests is one reason why many contractors have a policy to simply classify everything as type C. This can be a costly and time-consuming policy to implement, 
but it definitely cuts down on the variables and the arguments about who classified what and why. I should probably also talk just a bit about documentation. While OSHA doesn't require that these visual and manual evaluations be documented, it's a good idea, especially on the off chance that something bad does happen on site. Many contractors use a daily inspection form like this one to document their safety efforts.